tucked in there is exactly what I wanted to see after all these months of waiting. This is my Aliciara Peggy Root Carpenter Morning Joy. New growth is starting roots. I have two subscribers that want a piece of this orchid. It's time to go and divide her, clean her up and get her ready so that she can establish herself for shipping. Let's get started. I'm so happy this is happening. I cannot tell you. <laughs> Time to rejuvenate, scale her down for no other reason, but it's always good every once in a while to give an orchid a new, like a reset. Oh, she's heavy, goodness me. And she's been in this pot now two years. I don't know what to expect from the root system. The Alaras are weird like that, or Aliciaras are weird like that. They are prone to dumping their roots. And that is why you see that the pseudobulbs start to shrivel, despite the fact that she's an established orchid and has had plenty, plenty of years of growth. But they dump their roots and the pseudobulbs shrivel and then the new growths take over with their new roots and everything's okay again. So I'm not worried, but I did want to wait to do this until all the growths were big enough to start new roots. And despite only seeing one growth with new roots, if one growth is doing it, the others are not far behind. And you can tell how compromised the root system is. Typical Aliciara attitude here. But all this is best. This is what I'm looking for. So this is why we are going in now, and it's going to be radical. Three pieces are going to come out of this, if not more. There may already be just two plants in here, so that would help. We don't have to do a guessing game, but nope, that rhizome is connected. Not for long. Let's make sure that we protect whatever new roots are coming out there. Oh, I've been looking forward to this. I cannot tell you because I know what's going on in the pot, but to go in too soon would be careless. That would be careless. Even though when you say, yeah, well, she's going to recover with new roots, but why when all the energy is in the old back bulbs, there's no need to do it so soon. But this is great. This is awesome. I'm going to take this bulb off as well, right here. I got her at my garden center maybe, what, four years ago? She's been giving me lots and lots of spikes. Has a beautiful bloom with peppery fragrance. Reminds me of my favorite steakhouse in the US, Ruth's Chris. And that is always a nice little flashback. Oh, but this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna be a great, great cleanup. See how shriveled those bulbs are. Normal, normal behavior. Every two years, this Aliciara dumps her roots. And then those bulbs will recover once the new roots take over. So I'm going to be careful with that piece. And then, oh my goodness, did I even say hello? <laughs> I'm so sorry. Hi. If you've clicked on this video and here you are, ah, my excitement got the best of me and I just went, yap, 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 let's get going, finally. Thank you so much for joining me. I appreciate your company, thank you. So I'm not gonna name the two viewers. I don't know if they want to be named, but you know who you are, please get in touch with me that you've seen this video. I can also send you the link if you wish. We're gonna give it a couple of months so that they can recover before shipping. Maybe I'll ship in September when it's not so hot anymore, depending on your local environment and climate. We can discuss all that. 
via email. So I look forward to hearing from you, or if not in a couple of months, I will reach out to you. Either way, this is getting done, and it's getting done with you in mind because all the pieces will be potted up in separate pots with their own label so that we're ready to go when the time comes and it's all been documented. Right. I don't want to be too radical. I want to see first how each piece has enough going. Not just chop away because I've got new roots coming. Any storage organ is of help at this point. So I'm not going to be like, oh, I can get rid of this and this. No, but my thought process here is to maintain, you make sure I've got you in shot, to maintain all these storage organs for this piece, because then the new owner can decide whether they can take them off. But the orchid has all this to sustain herself in the recovery process. There's plenty of energy in there. And that is why I'm not just going in willy-nilly with my secateurs. And because it's the same orchid, I am not using alcohol between each cut, but there's a gorgeous rhizome I can get in here. Right there. That's one. Whoops, did I snap it off? Yep. Well, that was unfortunate. That was not the plan. I wanted to maintain this bulb, but that rhizome just cracked off. I will take it off though from this piece. There we go. Now we have three pieces. Lovely jubbly. Lots of dead roots. Lots of cleanup to do. But they're all going to be just fine. So this is a piece that is going to be shipped and it will be potted up separately. The new growth is doing wonderfully. But I, again, I'm keeping the back bulbs intact for the energy purposes of this orchid. I will, however, see how much I can clean up of the dead roots just to make it a much better potting up. I do need something for anchoring though. So I got to keep that in mind, not just to go all ninja on the roots here. Some anchoring would be good. And if it's not stable enough, then I'm going to, oop, don't want to lose that pseudobulb. I know it's dead, but I don't want to lose the energy, so don't let it crack again. Yeah, but the anchoring I can also do with lava rock placed around the base of the orchid. So to give the new roots a good start, I will remove most of the dead roots to a certain length, maintain some, and then the new owner can do the final proper cleanup depending on what media this orchid will be going into. I don't have bark here. I do everything with Lekka and self-watering. So I hope that that is going to be okay. But at least there'll be plenty to work with when she gets sent away. So that's one wonderful piece right here. I may go and run it under the tap because I can get a lot of the nasty out, these old sheaths and everything. So we'll keep that in mind. This is the other piece right here. I may just keep it as is because it's looking quite fine. The roots will help. No need to even trim. There are some lighter roots in here, but they're gone as well. And this one only needs a run under the tap. I'm going to clean off all this nasty right here. Fabulous. That's the next one. And this is the one I will be keeping. This one, we are going to go all in. Cleaning her up properly all the way. Roots and everything is going to be taken into consideration here. All of it. Sheaths, you name it, the whole nine yards.
because this one is going to get a complete reset. As I mentioned before at the beginning, it's really a good thing sometimes, especially with these hybrid oncidiums, not to be too radical with removing pseudobulbs too quickly. The more energy they have, the better. So I'm keeping this one on, even though it looks like it's bad, but it's not. It'll recover. I've had this one when I got it turn into a C, inverted C. That's how desiccated it was. But once the orchid established herself, there was plenty, plenty of energy going and the entire pseudobulb corrected herself. But what we will do here is be really harsh on the roots, on the old roots, because I don't want to be doing this again. Well, let's just put it this way. If I can avoid having to do this again in a year's time, because she is that vigorous, then that'd be great. And if not, if she really takes off after this rejuvenation, well, that's a great problem for an orchid grower to have. I'm just removing some of the old dried up sheaths. Complete makeover. And I want to make sure that my piece stays together. As with the other ones, I want those storage organs to stay in place. You know, Tesco, every little helps. Right. So all this is gone. Let's go straight across the bottom. So if you have this situation with an Alicera, Aliceara, I, I still prefer the name Bealara, but okay. But she's Bella, Bella. If you have this, do not worry. Do not worry, you've got new roots coming. Because this, I've just split her. Ah, da, 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 da. Because this is actually part of the attributes of this orchid to be doing the root dumping party trick. So that rhizome was not as thick as I expected and my little snippers went straight through. All right, we still got plenty to work with, it's fine. It's not part of the plan. I didn't want two orchids in a pot. Oh well, it's not the end of the world. Just means a little bit more of a fiddle when it comes time to pot her up. Yes, I'm very happy to be doing this. Super, super happy. This has been long overdue. How is the other one? Now you see, because it is so dirty, four years is a long time. Because this is all so dirty, I'm not going to be doing it with my sprayer. This is gonna take a little bit more activity under the tap. But I shall be back when they're all nice and shiny and then we'll see what we've got. Three pots ready to go. Temporary stakes in there because I'm not expecting them to be in there long, seeing as I'm gonna be shipping two pieces. Also with the pot that I'm keeping, I won't be needing that stake for too long. This orchid is so vigorous on the root front that I'm not too concerned. I will be potting up the clear plain RO water pot because we can see what the LECA does. These two still have the CalMag and the seaweed solution in there when I pot them up from the previous soak prior to taking the orchid out of the pot. I wanted to show you something because we always try to propagate, at least I do, as best as possible and as much as possible. That little piece that kind of snapped off, I was hoping to propagate and pot up with the other piece that I'm keeping. But here we are. I want to show you something. I'm not going to keep this piece, contrary to what a lot of public opinion might be out there, and I'll tell you why. Despite the fact that I've got great bulbs, left, right, etc., they are desiccating already. There are no viable roots. It snapped off the mother plant. I did a cleaner cut, but it also has absolutely no new growths coming. And these little bulbs here are already smaller to what it should be. Skinnier and desiccating. 
In my opinion, this is not a piece worth keeping, holding on to and propagating at all. If I didn't have a healthy second piece, I would definitely say I'm going to save this orchid. But these pieces are because new growth, new roots on the way, lots of storage organs for that new growth to develop. Same with this one. New growth, new roots, lots of storage organs. So these two are going to be the pieces I will pot up because they are going to be shipped. We'll put those in the shade for the time being. And this is the one that we're going to pot up together. So I've got a really small pot here that will only last for a year, but I don't care. An up pot is simple, straightforward when it comes to lecker potting media. No problems with that at all. Everybody has been treated with cinnamon. All the cuts are sorted out. I'm gonna get these other pots out of the way because I'm gonna do that off camera. But you see that in this case, for one year, I'm just gonna put her up into the middle. Whether the back will shoot out another growth, I don't think so. These are pretty spent. This bulb is from the day I got her, so it's probably really outdated, but it makes a great anchoring point for the orchid to stabilize her in the pot. And that's exactly how I'm going to pot her up. First of all, I'm going to get some leca in to the bottom. And because she is such a thirsty orchid, this one gets small leca. Yes, only one loop, but because it's also a small pot. It'll be perfect for the year and she will fill that pot up in next to no time. So yes, I have flooded my pot because I like the gentle repot around the roots. Clearly, I don't have viable roots, so there's really no need to do this, but I'm now putting myself into the habit of doing it like this so that it's not like one day yes and one day no. This way I can stay consistent with how I pot my orchids up and not forget one day to continue along this line of gentle repot with submerging the lecker straight away and letting it fall around the roots. On a beautiful warm day like this, I'm quite happy to wet the cut around the rhizome again. It's going to be all right. Everything's going to dry off pretty, pretty easily. No issues, not concerned at all. There's a light breeze going. So I'm going to add a little bit in the back here for that other growth. And then I'm going to tie the orchid up to a, an older existing pseudobulb and give it plenty of room around the back of the bulb, as you can see. You see that? There's plenty of room for that bulb to recover and swell up again without me worrying about tying it off too much. One final little thing, just the name tag. Let's see how the lecker settles when the water is drained. Give it a flush through. Leave some in the reservoir. No fertilizer at this point. No fertilizer anymore because no roots in the pot to absorb fertilizer. And I don't want the mineral buildup on the surface while the new roots get going. I'm just gonna cover those up there so they don't have to find their way across the surface of the lecker. They're just going straight in the pot. Remember, if you didn't see the rhizome video, it's okay to bury the base a little bit with lecker if you have a dry top layer because it will not affect the base or rot any of the growths out. That includes this one, just a little bit in the back to make sure that the new roots don't come to the hot, dry air. But first, find something nice and moist. And that'll save me now from having to mist her. I can flush through and keep that lecker nice and wet and it'll be perfect. So I'm gonna pot up the other two pieces unless I find something extraordinary. 
I won't be filming that and I'll see you when I'm all done and we can put the shiny new labels into their pots. Nothing extraordinary happened while I potted the other ones up, but I wanted to show you some things, some pointers that I'm going to be working on with this grouping to focus on the maximum root growth straight into the pot. First of all, here's one piece. We've got that new growth, which is pretty obvious, and we've got another little growth starting right down here. I don't know how well that will develop in the next two or three months, but you can see how high the leka is. So the new roots of this growth are going straight in the pot. And the same with this one, except this one, because I'm leaving in as many of the storage organs on at the back for the recovery. Here's a new growth. This is the growth I'm focusing on right now with regards to how the leka is right up against it at the base. No roots need to be guessing where they are meant to go. And this one is pretty straightforward as well the bases are well covered. None of them have viable roots in the pot except for what we saw has started to grow. So in order to make sure that my dry top layer is literally cancelled out, my reservoir is exaggerated high. Plain RO water only. No fertilizer required. There are no roots in the pot. But the level of the water is so high, it would be unacceptable if there were roots in the pot. But this is mainly, once the pot is submerged in the mask, to bring the water level almost halfway to here, displacing the water up as high as possible. And with that, it cancels out my dry top layer and I don't have to be spraying, misting or anything like that. And the new growths won't be affected. I'm now going to show you where they're going to live for the next two or three months and talk a little bit about new growth and light training. This is where they are going to live for the next couple of months until they have set themselves in and established and the pseudobulbs aren't as wrinkly anymore. Mainly, this is now the pre-shipping treatment, also growth training. You can see that I have the growths facing away from the main source of light, which is opposite, you know, where the stake is, that's the main source of light and I want the growth to grow nicely upright and into the pot. Same here. This is uh, starting because of the way I had it positioned before I split it, so the growth is already curving up and nicely into the pot. And here's a case with three new growths, which of course you would think the third one in the back is facing the main source of light over there, but it's not. I've positioned it in such a way that it is the light is blocked by that big pot next to it and the main source of light is still coming from this angle. So what I want to have happen is that this growth back here comes straight up, maybe more towards us and into the pot. And then we shall see by September, I think they should be ready to go. Thank you everybody so very, very much for watching. I appreciate your time. I hope you found this interesting. Have yourselves a wonderful day and please stay safe and take care. Bye.